everybody, Trevor here, and welcome to another Top 10 video. This one was requested by a user named Haha ha No, and that person wants me to do a Top 10 Cartoon Network shows. Now, Cartoon Network was one of my all-time favorite channels from my childhood, along with Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and PBS Kids. And, to be frank, it's hard for me to decide which of these four are the best. Anyways, Cartoon Network was the channel that also brought us other blocks including Adult Swim, Toonami, Boomerang, and most recently, Cartoonito. Time for a little history lesson. Cartoon Network was launched on October 1st, 1992 by Ted Turner, who also founded the Turner Broadcasting System in 1965. And when Cartoon Network was launched, it aired various classic cartoons at the time, including the Hanna Barbera ones. In the past, we had some memorable eras, including Checkerboard, which was the very first, the Powerhouse, and lest we forget, the Yes era. But unfortunately, it all went downhill from the mid to late 2000s with some forgettable and unfunny cartoons, as well as the first lineup of live action shows, which were even worse. But 2009 was like, one of the worst years of my life because not only the economy went down back then, but because there were like zero new cartoons at the time. At least we've had the TV movie finale of Ed and Nettie, which in my opinion, ended the series on a positive note. But at the same time, I miss this show very much. Luckily in the 2010s, a miracle happened. And since then, we had fresh new cartoons including Adventure Time and Regular Show. Sure, there were some duds in the last decade like Teen Titans Go, but to be honest, I take this new era over the Snyder era any day because there are more new decent cartoons today than there were back in the late 2000s. Okay, let's get back to the top 10 now. For this list, I'm mostly going to pick shows from my childhood because those were the ones I'm used to. But I'll try to list at least one or two new shows if I can. I also won't be including any shows that appeared on Adult Swim, Toonami, or Cartoonito, with the exception of Samurai Jack, but I'll get to that later. Now without further ado, let's begin this awesome top 10. Number 10 is the Looney Tunes show from 2011 to 2014. As much as I love the original Looney Tunes shorts from the Golden Age of Animation, but when it comes to its modern day spin-offs, this is my most favorite one for a number of reasons. For one thing, I didn't mind the slow-paced nature of the show. Sure, it's completely different from most Looney Tunes cartoons, but at least it's trying to be its own version of regular show. Secondly, I like the funny moments in this show. Sometimes they don't land well, other times they do, which leads me to my next point. I love most of the characters in this show, including Daffy Duck. Honestly, I don't mind his arrogance and idiocy here because that's what made him hilarious and special. However, the best characters in the entire show in my opinion were Lola Bunny and Tina Russo. No offense to the people who prefer the old Lola as well as Melissa Duck from the original shorts, but I prefer these two characters because for one thing, they made Lola silly and forgetful, which is a good character flaw for her. It's better than her bland personality in the first Space Jam movie. I also think Tina Russo has more going on than Melissa Duff because unlike Melissa, she actually had personality and charm to her character. I especially enjoyed listening to her tough New Jersey accent. But the reason this is number 10 is because it's got some things I don't like. For example, I don't like the fact that Witch Hazel's name was changed to Lisa and now has an African-American accent. Not to mention that she's now the mother of Gossamer, who is a kid in this show. I even don't like the fact that Taz is Bugs and Daffy's household pet instead of his usual character in the original show. But aside from those things, I'd give this show like a 7.5 out of 10 stars. While it does have its faults, but I consider it the best Looney Tunes spinoff in the last decade. Number 9 is Sonic Boom. Say, do you want to see Teen Titans Go done right but with Sonic the Hedgehog characters? Why not watch Sonic Boom? While the Sonic Boom games themselves weren't that great in terms of gameplay, but the show itself, in my opinion, was a huge upgrade. 
First of all, I love the funny characters, including Dr. Eggman himself, as well as the funny one-liners and references such as Justin Bieber, who is a parody of Justin Bieber. But my most favorite character out of all of them, besides Dr. Eggman, was this version of Knuckles. I know some people don't like this incarnation of Knuckles mainly because he's a moron, but personally, I'd take this Knuckles over his original serious counterpart any day, and besides, we already have a more serious and edgy character in the franchise. Also in my opinion, this is my favorite Sonic cartoon of all time. No offense to the people who grew up with the 90s Sonic cartoons, but when it comes to the comedy and characters, this is the best Sonic show. But I put this as number 9 because when it comes to the Sonic games, I'm not very good at them, which is why I'm not buying any more Sonic games. Not to mention that I even left the fan base itself because they always try to find something to complain about, which is not very healthy in my eyes. Whether they are trolls or not, they're still a toxic fan base. But that doesn't stop me from enjoying some of the characters, storylines, and music in the franchise, especially in the Sonic Boom show, which I still consider one of my favorite shows from the 2010s. Number 8. The Powerpuff Girls, or at least the original. Ah, The Powerpuff Girls, one of the two shows made by Lauren Faust, who is also the one responsible for My Little Pony's success in the 2010s. What I love about The Powerpuff Girls is not only the action and music, but also because of the characters themselves, including the three girls, Professor Utonium, the mayor of Townsville, Miss Bellum, and of course, Mojo Jojo. My favorite seasons of the show would have to be the first four, not only in terms of animation and character designs, but because most of their episodes were great in terms of writing and comedy. For example, one of the best episodes in my opinion was Monkey See Doggy Do, because, you know, I'm a dog lover. And it's also the very first episode I saw on TV, if you discount the pilot episodes and what a cartoon. Seasons 5 and 6, on the other hand, weren't as good as I remembered them. Most of their episodes were either cringeworthy, not funny, or just too slow-paced. For example, there's this one episode known as Girls Gone Mild where the proper girls were forced to not take any more action in the city because of a couple strict jerks. What are they, soccer moms? And there's another episode known as the City of Frownsville, where this weird villain made an invention to make the whole town cry, including the pop of girls, just so that he could be the only happiest man in Townsville. How annoying is that? I'd rather listen to Spongebob cry than watch this pointless episode. But to be quite honest, I'd rather watch the first six seasons over the 2016 reboot episodes any day because... At least they are all part of the original series, as well as having the original voice actresses for the three girls. I could rant on the 2016 reboot all day, but that's a topic for another time. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention in the script is that the original title for the show was Whoop Ass Stew. When I first read this, I was like, seriously? Is this a kid's show or what? Overall, this is a really great show, and I'm thankful that Craig McCracken is going to bring it back pretty soon. I just hope it's better than the 2016 reboot because we all know how bad that one was. Number 7. Tom and Jerry The Original Shorts I love Tom and Jerry. They're hilarious and charming. When I was a kid, I used to watch a bunch, and I do mean a bunch, of the original shorts from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. In fact, there are so many good ones that I can't list them all here. One of my favorite shorts was this one where Tom plays the bass to some white girl cat in the balcony and sings, Is you or is you ain't my baby? Which was performed by Ira Buck Woods in the cartoon. Another one of my favorites was Slicked Up Pup, where Tom was tasked to watch Spike's son, Tyke, and make sure he stays clean. But Jerry plans to trick Tom into making him dirty. Fun fact. I used to have this one short on VHS back in the day. But I decided to put this as number 7 because Tom and Jerry is one of those old cartoons that's been milked to death by the company. You know Warner Brothers, there are plenty of ideas for reboots for older shows, right? Well, 
why not make a revival of Yogi Bear or some other old cartoon that hasn't gotten any spotlight in a long time? But still, I enjoyed most of the old Tom and Jerry shorts from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's one of my all-time favorite cartoons from the Golden Era along with the Looney Tunes. Number 6. Dexter's Laboratory Dexter's Laboratory is about a boy genius who builds a secret laboratory in his room, while his older and dim-witted sister Dee Dee is the one who likes to sneak in and wreak havoc, much to his annoyance. This was one of the very first cartoon cartoons I remember watching as a kid along with Cow and Chicken and Johnny Bravo. One of my favorite episodes was Ice Cream Scream, where Dexter pursues an ice cream man for ice cream but refused to give him some due to a tragic backstory with a big jar of pennies. By the way, I love ice cream. My favorite flavor is chocolate. Another one of my favorite episodes was The Big Cheese, where Dexter can only say omelette du fromage due to a recording machine that went haywire. The best seasons, in my opinion, are the first two in terms of animation and humor. The later seasons, such as season 3, didn't quite age very well because not only that the animation is different, but the character designs drastically changed. Not to mention that there are continuity errors, especially with Mandark's backstory on how he first met Dexter. And those are the reasons why Dexter's Laboratory is number 6 on this list. But I'll still treasure the first two seasons. Number 5. Johnny Bravo. Like Dexter's Laboratory, this was also one of the very first cartoon cartoons I remember watching as a kid. Johnny Bravo is about a handsome young man who is also a buffoon, tries to find love around Aaron City only to get beat up by every beautiful woman he meets, which is the running gag of the show. That's one thing I love about Johnny Bravo. The second thing is that I thought Jeff Bennett's Elvis impression suits the character perfectly. Some of my favorite episodes include the Twilight Zone parody trilogy, the first one is about a clown trying to destroy an airplane that Johnny and his mother were riding in. The second one is about Johnny trying to babysit a boy with psychic powers. And the third and final one is about a talking girl doll named Tabitha that likes to torment Johnny. Even though I didn't get the references as a kid, but personally, I didn't care because all I cared about was the entertainment, and that's it. In conclusion, Giant Bravo is a really good and funny cartoon. And I'm sure your kids will enjoy watching this because it's got humor that appeals to both kids and adults. Number 4. Courage the Cowardly Dog Courage is about a timid pink dog who must protect his new family from evil doers and monsters that invade their home in the middle of nowhere. As a dog lover, I loved this show when I was little. Sure, it has some scary moments, but also knows when to be funny and heartwarming. For example, there's this one sad episode called Last of the Star Makers, which is about these squids that live in space and they make stars. But one day, they were attacked by a giant space whale and the father had to sacrifice himself to save his wife and kids, and the mother had to take her babies down to Earth for safety. What's also sad about this episode is that in the end, the mother dies by turning into a beautiful garden, but luckily, the babies were still safe and returned home to space thanks to Courage's help. Oh, and the music at the beginning makes me want to tear up. Another episode I really like was King Ramses' Curse, which was about a stolen slab that was said to be cursed by King Ramses, and whoever doesn't return it to its rightful place shall be cursed with three plagues. What's scary about this episode is not only Ramses' voice and early computer graphics, but also because his voice actor was uncredited, so you could assume that it was just a ghost. But in all seriousness, I still believe that Courage the Cowardly Dog is one of the best Cartoon Network shows of all time because it's funny, scary, and heartwarming at the same time. So therefore, it deserves the number 4 spot. Oh, and if there's one character I don't like in the show, it would be Eustace Bag because he always treats Courage and Muriel like garbage. He's such a Scrooge, you know? Number 3 is Batman the Animated Series. When it comes to superhero shows, this is my most favorite one mainly because I'm a huge Batman fan. And this series, in my opinion, is the best Batman cartoon because it's not only serious, but knows when to be funny at times. For example, my favorite Batman villain of all time is the Joker, voiced by Mark Hamill. Not only he can be scary, but can also be really funny. In fact, me and two of my cousins would laugh every time his face is on screen because he likes to smile a lot. But there are a few episodes that did traumatize me as a kid. 
For example, in Theta Clay, which is the origin story of Clayface, there were two jerks who poured this jug of liquid into this actor's mouth and placed him in a car to rest until his whole body was changed from liquid to hard clay. This scared me as a kid because not only is it gross, but I did feel sorry for the guy who eventually became a villain in the second part. It just shows that there are some supervillains that are sympathetic, and Clayface is no exception. While there are other decent Batman cartoons like Batman Beyond, but this series will always be my favorite because of these reasons. And if you're new to Batman, then I suggest you watch the whole series on DVD or some streaming service because it's so good. Number 2 is Samurai Jack. This show is about a brave samurai warrior wielding a magic sword, which is the only weapon that could defeat the evil Aku. But before the final blow, Aku opens a time portal to send Jack to the far future, where Aku rules the Earth. And it's up to Jack to get back to his own time and defeat Aku once and for all. When I was young, I liked to pretend to be a samurai by using a fly swatter instead of an actual katana. But enough about that. One thing I love about this show is the theme song. Sure, the lyrics were minimal, but it's got a nice beat to it. I also love the action and adventure that Jack's going through throughout the series because it's fun to watch. And to be honest, I can't tell which of these episodes from seasons 1 to 4 are my favorite. I kind of like them all. However, one of my most favorite episodes in my opinion was the episode where Aku tells these kids a story. I love this one because it was so hilarious. I laughed so hard when I first watched this a few times. For instance, one of my favorite scenes was when Aku told a story or a parody of Little Red Riding Hood known as Little Red Hood. And I thought it was pretty cute when he was trying to do a little girl impression. And later on, Little Red Hood beats up the wolf and saves Grandma. How funny is that? Another scene I laughed at was when Aku parodied Goldilocks and the Three Bears by calling it Jack and the Three Bears. And Jack's evil in this story, which makes it so funny. It's like you can tell that Mako is having fun with this episode. Oh, and I especially love the end of the story where Jack says, SHUT UP! I'M TRYING TO SLEEP! As for Season 5 on Adult Swim, it was good, but not as good as the first four seasons in terms of continuity. Don't get me wrong, it's got some great moments in this season like the fanservice episode where Ashi meets everybody that Jack encountered on his journeys, but the final season itself has one big problem, and that would be the conflict with the Guardian from one of the original seasons. In Season 5, he died off screen for some stupid reason, and I was hoping that we would have one more final battle between him and Jack. That way, there wouldn't be such a big continuity error, but no, we had to focus on the character development between Jack and Ashi. Not that I don't like this shipping, but still, you get my point. But the one thing that makes this season worth watching is Scaramouche himself, voiced by Tom Kenny. Yeah, he's one of my new favorite cartoon villains. And while it was nice for Jack to finally come home to his own time and defeat Aku once and for all, but I do find it disappointing that because of Aku's final defeat, Ashi dies after that because without him, she wouldn't exist in the future. Thankfully, they fixed this problem in the video game Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, but aside from those things, Samurai Jack is and will always be my second favorite Cartoon Network show because of these reasons alone. And I suggest you check it out because it's really good. Now before I get to my number one pick, I just want to give some honorable mentions. The original Teen Titans. It got beat out by Batman because I'm more obsessed with Batman than any other DC superhero show. But hey, it still holds up compared to Teen Titans Go. What's new Scooby-Doo? As much as I love this spin-off of Scooby-Doo, but the reason it didn't make it is because, like Tom and Jerry, it's been milked to death, and I'm actually getting tired of newer Scooby-Doo shows. Cow and Chicken. I'll admit, I did enjoy this show when I was little, mainly because of Charlie Adler's voice performances, but it didn't make it because it's one of those shows that tries to rip off Ren and Stimpy, and it's quite weird too. The Amazing World of Gumball. I hardly watched this show, even back when it first aired. I guess it's because I'm more used to the stuff that I grew up with as a kid. 
and I'm not that crazy about using different kinds of animation than just one. I don't know, it's just weird in my book. However, one thing I do like about this show is that it has some of the voice actors from the CGI Thomas series, including Carrie Shale and Teresa Gallagher, so props to them. Steven Universe I haven't really seen this one that much either, but I've heard it went downhill during the series finale. And my number one most favorite Cartoon Network show of all time is... Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This show is about three adolescent boys who scam the other kids out of their money just to buy giant jawbreakers for themselves. But their scams fail almost every time, which is one of the running gags of the show. Out of all the Cartoon Network shows that I've grown up with, this is my most favorite one for a number of reasons. I love all the characters, except maybe the Cankers and Sarah because they're likable and relatable. Even the Eds themselves have distinct personalities. Eddie is the shortest, loudest, and bossiest. Ed, aka Double D, is the smartest, weakest, and kindest, which is why he's my most favorite, and Ed, who is the dumbest, strongest, and most hilarious of the three. Oh, and he's also my second favorite. Double D is the one I relate to the most because there were times where I do have sympathy towards the guy. He is known for being the most gullible of the Eds. For instance, in the case of Ed, he was convinced that he was terminally ill by a fictional disease known as Lackadaisy Cathro disease, which causes him to cry only to realize that he's been tricked on by Eddie and Ed. And in my opinion, this was an okay episode because for one thing, I do like the ending where Double D teaches the other two a lesson about playing tricks by letting Kevin into the house to beat them up. But at the same time, he should have realized that he's not really dying in the first place. If you want to see an episode like this done right, then I would recommend Mama's Little Ed. And another episode where I do feel sorry for the guy was in A Fistful of Ed, where he was accused of being the tough kid in school. He tried to convince everyone that it was all just an accident, but for some reason, nobody believed him, which also caused him to cry. In other words, he did nothing wrong! But like a case of Ed, this one is also okay because I'm glad that the ads were all friends again in the end. But at the same time, the climax could have been a little bit better if Jimmy didn't decide to beat up Double D in the end. If you watch the episode, you'll see what I mean. But there's a ton of episodes I do love. My most favorite one of them all was An Ed is Born, which is about Eddie trying to make a home movie just to impress his big brother and to show him that he's all grown up. This is the best episode because it's like a parody of America's Funniest Home Videos. You can also say that it's kind of a parody of those poorly made home movies that can be found on video hosting sites such as YouTube. Unfortunately, like other great shows, even back in my youth, this one has a few duds. My least favorite episode was the two-parter If It Smells Like an Ed. Not only because Jimmy was out of character in this one, but because there's one scene where Double D was laughing along with everyone else due to Jimmy getting a wedgie, which causes poor Jimmy to snap and frame the ads for their laughing. Seriously, Double D, how could you? My second least favorite episode would have to be Sorry Wrong Ed. And it's not just because I felt bad for Eddie for being tormented by that quote-unquote cursed telephone, but like the last one, Double D was also out of character here. He's been acting kind of a jerk to Eddie. Personally, I think this episode could have worked if the curse affected the other kids, you know, besides Eddie, of course, as well as making Double D feel concerned for his friend Eddie like he usually does. But the real reason this is number one is not just because of the likable and relatable characters, but also the bizarre humor, unique animation, catchy theme song, and the fact that this show makes me wish I was a kid again, just like the Eds. Although I do think the show ended on a pretty positive note with the big picture show TV movie, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind a revival of this if it was more of a continuity from the previous generation where the Eds are high schoolers or something like that, and then it could be aimed at adults, just like with Samurai Jack Season 5. After all, Danny Antonucci did make a few adult anime cartoons before this. And one last thing that makes Ed and Nettie great is that it's one of the best Canadian cartoons along with My Little Pony French Biz Magic. And it's the reason why I've decided to make some MLP slash Ed and Eddie parody videos on my YouTube channel in the first place. Man, those were the days. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite Cartoon Network TV shows. 
Let me know in the comments on which of these are your favorite. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? And yes, I'll be doing the same thing for Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and PBS Kids, but not right away because they're not on my monthly schedule yet. Oh, and if there's anything else I could have elaborated more on or added in, feel free to give me constructive criticism about it. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.